Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Worland with Chase Ingram, five-time individual games competitor and the 2011 Open champion, Dan Bailey in the booth. And Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Chase, for this event, we're going to get inverted because Adrian Bosman has decided that the data on the handstand push-up is inaccurate. Pause while hurt feelings are loading because we are getting inverted, as you said. We are facing the wall instead of having our back to the wall. Don't worry about the bike. You got 30 reps of block deficit handstand push-ups in between all of those. But at the end, if it comes down to a race, it's going to be a nasty finish. Back to basics. If you look at the old school journal, there is a two-part series by Carl Paoli, and it inverted is the way you should have started when you learned this back in the day. And if you got it, great. If not, you're going to be standing looking at that plexiglass wall for quite a while. And for more on that wall-facing handstand push-up, let's go down to Mike Arsenal. Well, this is the latest iteration of the handstand push-up to appear in CrossFit Games programming. And according to Adrian Bosman, this is the pinnacle of the movement because it basically forces the athletes into an upside-down reverse strict, uh, strict press position, and the athletes are unable to rest their head on the ground at the bottom of each rep. He first saw this version, uh, learned it from an instructor at an acrobat school who would do this version of the movement daily off the edge of a set of bleachers. That was back in 2003. So this test for the athletes is literally two decades in the making. First of four heats for the men. Lane number four, rookie Cole Greasaber comes in in 33rd place overall. And he had a decent showing night one in Elizabeth Plus Plus. And we had the traverse dips on the parallel bar. Now something that can tie into today's movement is every time you get up to the wall, you have to do a wall walk essentially in that position. So every set you do has its own inverted traverse. And that was one of the most underestimated parts that disrupted everybody in Elizabeth. There is Colton Mertens, 32nd overall after six events. I think in the two different movements we have, the Echo Bike, as far as Merton's size, definitely not his friend, but his ability to do high volume, high skill gymnastics. This is one of those athletes that can benefit from actually having success on the wall relative to some of the other athletes. We are underway. We start with the 30 calories on the Echo Press, on the Echo Bike. If you're an Echo Press, Dan, this is a, an event you got to test extensively. When you first kicked up into that wall facing handstand, what kind of adjustments did you have to make to make sure that you could get that movement done? A handstand push ups have always been one of my best movements in any competition. So, I mean, I was excited to see this come out, but also a little nervous of how it was going to affect it. And so I was kind of paying attention to how wide did I want to put my hands? Where was I comfortable? And you nailed it with that wall walk, getting up into the handstand push up. It takes a lot out of you. So if you get up there and you're like, oh my goodness, like I'm already too tired to even do one, you might have to pause and wait. And that definitely played a factor into the latter rounds of 10. But as soon as I kind of figured it out, what worked out for me was keeping my hands a little bit narrower. And it almost felt like bouncing out of the bottom of a squat. So my arms would, my bicep would basically touch off my forearm and give me a little extra push out the bottom. So I stayed more narrow. I'll be interested to see what the athletes choose to do in terms of where their hand placement is. Lawrence Fiebix judges hand is in the air as he is done with his first 30 calories. And now there's 10 wall facing hands and push ups. And as you said, one of the hardest parts is just getting into position before the hardest part <laughs> of the entire movement. You almost have to take a little yes. jump with your hands and kind of push yourself off the floor yes. to get that big step up. Andre Uday is also onto the wall. Now, one thing to note, these athletes did have an opportunity to practice this in the back, unlike some other implements we've seen so far, the parallel bars with the dips during Elizabeth, the strict pegboards for the skills test. They didn't have an opportunity to do that. They had to set up with these specific blocks to allow the opportunity to work. And Cole Mertens and Andre Uday will be the first two men back to the bike. Now 20 calories and Tudor Magda on the bottom of your screen in the black shorts is in third. 
I don't want to say that the echo bike calories are inconsequential, but you can definitely ruin your workout on the echo bike here. If you press too hard on these calories and it costs you on the handstand push-ups, you're going to end up wasting a lot more time staring at that wall if you tire yourself out on the bike. Andre Uday at the 60 rep mark will be able to move on. And this is where we were talking to Adrian Bosman. He said, you know, the bigger athletes who don't like the handstand push-up are going to be able to make up some ground on the smaller guys like Colt Burns who do like that. I think the, the middle part to your point, Sean, is really where Mertens can make his move in the smaller set to canals of the echo bike, but his proficiency in those handstand push-ups. Correct. If you're doing the handstand push-ups unbroken, it's going to be hard for a bigger athlete to come in behind you and waste himself on the echo bike to catch up with you. Because you can make up a lot of time by not making any breaks on the handstand push-ups. Andre Uday is the first man back to the wall for his second set of 10 hands and pushes, and here comes Colt Mertens. The 70 rep mark is where the two of them will move on. And Uday right now with a three rep lead on Mertens. I mean, look at this range of motion, Sean. Fiving on the right, watch him come down. The bottom of the tape line is where he has to get past. He didn't press that. On the second rep, the top of the head gets clearly below. So for the standard for the men, that thickness of the line, men have to get below the tape line, where women have to just get to the tape line. There's Colt Burtons, as Tudor Magda has now passed Uday for the lead, and Burtons and Magda off the wall at the same time. Magda going right to the bike. Burtons actually has a couple to go. So Tudor Magda all by himself in first place. And here comes Andre Uday on the left side of your screen to join Magda on the bike. You can see Magda there at the first couple calories. He didn't even put his hands on the handles. He's just trying to save his arms, save his triceps from that fatigue because he knows he's got that last set of handstand push-ups coming up. Dan, I love that you pointed that out because when you look at an echo bike, different than, say, a Concept 2 bike or a road bike we saw earlier, that it's all lower body. Maybe resting your arms there gets tiring, but with an echo bike, a key element of moving that well is using your arms, which you need for the last set of 10. Correct. When I was on the bike, if I used my arms at all, I was thinking pull back. Very little energy anything for the push, and obviously a lot with the legs. The, the tricky part, especially the athletes aren't used to the volume of these reps for the inverted handstand push-ups is, like we said, the wall walk itself, taking away really from your lockout getting through the top and, and messing with that shoulder stability and stamina. And then you have to decide, it's like, is it worth me breaking? Maybe with two or three left to go and having to traverse up or toughing it out for a first set attempt. Well, the one thing that the larger athletes definitely have to think about is, I want to choose how I'm going to break these reps up. I don't want my body to choose it for me in failing. Because once you fail that rep, again, that rep doesn't count. All of the time that you're taking to wait to recover, and then all the time it takes you to get back on the wall, is the amount of time that that rep costs you, it's incredibly costly in a workout like this when you're with the top 1% of the 1% athletes as well. Andre Uday and Tour Magda are your leaders. Colton Mertens is on his final set of 10, and it's 30 final calories on the bike to close this thing out. And you think about coming down to a bike race between Uday, Magda, and Mertens. Burns almost doesn't really have a choice to put himself into a red line to get off the wall ahead of these athletes. Yeah, he's got to get ahead because 30 calories is going to go very, very quick here for these athletes at the finish. There's nothing after that, so there's no excuse to pace. I want to see it. I want to see all these guys get on that bike at about the same time. It's a super exciting finish. Programming in your affiliate, or even just doing normal training, when you see a monostructural element at the end of the machine, you know it's just going to be. It's yeah. agony. If you have any experience in the gym and you see that pop up ending on a 200 meter run, 400 meter run, 20 cal echo, you know you're in for it. We just saw Tudor Magda fail the rep as Andre Uday is trying to get through the set of 10. And he is done. And he will move on. Actually, he has a couple left now. He is. Handful of reps left. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault.
I have a question for Chase and Dan. As we take a look at Tudor Magda in lane number eight, he has his hands locked on the edge of the box, of the block. So I'm curious, what? Uh, why would he use that technique, having the hands on the edge of the block instead of right on the, right on the flat? He's using the corner. We'll answer that in one second, but this is a race now for first between Andre Uday and Colton Mertens. Mertens was pedaling for his life before Andre Uday got on that thing, and Uday has got to get to 130. And Mertens did exactly what we said he had to do. He had to get up wall first with any opportunity to not get caught by Andre Uday. All right, put himself in the right spot. Let's see if he can finish it off. The Ten calories remaining. Seven now for Andre Uday. Seven forty-four point four four seconds. Mertens getting set to finish up. Now here to deal with Mike Arsenault's question. <laughs> I, I think a lot of it just comes down to comfort. What are you most comfortable with? Uh, with putting your hands over the edge. And also, I, I know that I had my hands kind of over the edge, and it felt like a more stable position for my wrist. I don't know really how to explain that. I just know as an athlete, that's where I wanted him to go. And once I was there, I was like, yes, this is where I need to be. In the wrist and Correct. fingers over the, the edge mimics really kind of what a barbell press should feel. Correct. Two to Magda slides across. 8.8.21 seconds for Magda. Magda right, so Raquel Bay is your leader on the floor. Ten-minute time cap for the men. Kelby is going to get in, no problem. Georges Karabas has four handstand push-ups remaining in those 30 calories. Well, damn it, that finish at the end, we're talking about how nasty it is to end on an, a movement such as this, but I think it's even worse to finish next to somebody. Yeah, I would really like to run this last 400 alone. Alone, at I, my own pace. I don't want to run away from someone and just make it that much more stressful. Right. The agony here, too, is if you're running, you can kind of tell. You can gauge the distance. On the bike, you don't know. You don't know where someone's at. There's no excuse to slow down or no chance you have of knowing where your competitor is. Glorious Carabas has 23 calories to go and probably going to run out of time, but a great effort from Carabas here in the final seconds of the opening heat. Event number seven for the men, the final event that they would face here on Friday. And Andre Uday, 744.44 seconds. Colton Mertens got to the bike first. So Mertens hit the final stretch on these last set of handstand push-ups. Was doing exactly what he needed to do. He didn't even have a choice, and he just tried to max it out with the potential of getting that one more. He did get on the bike before Andre Uday, but Uday's power output outmatched Mertens at the end to give him the win. Andre Uday has the top time, 744.44 seconds. Colton Mertens will finish second. And Tudor Magda takes third. Back in a bit with heat number two for the men.
Echo Press, the seventh event of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games underway here in the Coliseum of the Alliant Energy Center. Keys to success, the recipe for success for this event. And when we say back to the basics, we harken back to what the basic principles of an inverted handstand push-up is, and that's body position. Being in the right body position with mid lat stability is the secret to any style of handstand push-ups. And you either got it or you don't. This is a hard thing to learn on the fly because of the difficulty of this movement. Second of four heats. Enrico Zanoni is coming off a great performance and a heat win earlier today in up and over and now sits in 25th place coming into this event. We heard that he, he's practiced Deficit handstand push-ups from a freestanding hat position without having his head touch the ground. There's one of those little tricks in this movement that I think people are, are underestimating, not having that below them. Yeah, there's no support there at the bottom. If you have the bottom out, maybe take a little bit of a rest. You don't have that option here. So once you go down and you're not coming back up, that's kind of it. you got to kick off the wall and get ready for your next rep. Brent Fikowski currently sits in 22nd overall. He started the day in 30th. He's slowly climbing up the standings. We are underway, 30 calories on the Echo Bike to start. Andre Uday, the time to beat, 7 minutes, 44.44 seconds. As four men out of nine in that opening heat were able to finish this event in its entirety inside the 10-minute time cap. And unfortunately for Brent, he can't dream the handstand push-ups away even if he closes his eyes that long on the bike. But for Brent Fikowski, he actually has a unique skill set based off what we said is back to basics. This is a guy that is a student of the game. He is a student of the methodology. And what Brent Fikowski's biggest weapon is sometimes, adverse to his size, is his ability to get in good positions. We see that no more apparent in his wall walk ability. He is one of the best wall walkers in the game, men or women. And that being one of the things that disrupts the front-facing deficit handstand push-up, I think his attention to detail may be actually a huge asset for Brett Fikowski in this event. The first thing I think of when I think of Brent as an athlete is meticulous. He doesn't leave any stone unturned. And like you mentioned in the wall walk, that's an event that I should be able to handle him pretty well, especially in the open. It was only paired with double unders. Okay, this is something I can still get one of the elite athletes with. And he bested me in it by a lot. That is Jay Crouch, who's on to the wall first, and Crouch with a no rep there. And the top of the head must go below the bottom of the tape line. See, Fikowski on the right, a little shallow, and you can't really see it. That's the other thing that we talk a lot is like, you can't really see the depth of your air squat either, so you have to really understand how that feels. So he got the first one. And then on the third one, from this angle, his forehead is leaning up. We talk about good body position. Lifting your forehead is breaking the midline. Back to basics. Being in a nice, stacked torso position is the secret to success on these handstand push-ups. That's another thing we didn't talk about before. When you can't touch your head to the ground, you actually don't know where you've completed the rep or not here. Unless you get those good reps, OK, now I have some memory, some body position memory where I need to get back to in the bottom. Jake Krause is back on the bike along with Enrico Zanon who got there first. Zanoni got through his handstand push-ups in 35 seconds. Tim Paulson onto the bike. Now here's Heinrich Kapalainen. Dima Hero's coming to the bike as well now. You know, Dan, we talk about midline stability, core strength, all that stacking on top of each other. It's really easy to say if this was the only event you were going to do for the day. But if we look at the totality of things that have happened already, the capital, the 20 pig flips, three and a half mile run, the carry, the Busa fell back. And then we look at the 90 juicy sit-ups, the front rack walking lunge. It's not like you haven't been taxed in pretty much everything you need for these handstand push-ups. Right, and on top of that, the uh, P-bars and all of the tricep burn, and now we're going to turn you inverted and ask you to do a different kind of handstand push-up. So this is a big challenge for these guys, like you mentioned, based on all the volume they've done so far this week. Jay Crouch onto the wall for his second set of 10 handstand push-ups. He's just ahead of Enrico Zanoni, who is just now walking to the wall for the second time. Crouch in his 
fifth career crossing game appearance, his third as an individual. He's a team competitor twice in 2018 and then again in 2019. The rebound crossed with Franson's team. And last year at the games, he was 22nd overall. And Tononi is really impressing me on the left. And not, some of that too is just his arm length, but his arm width position. He's that strong in that position is very impressive. When I'm watching these guys do this, I'm actually looking for the speed they're coming out of the bottom. It's very indicative of how well they're handling these handstand push-ups. And he's coming out of the bottom of those handstand push-ups very, very fast. And Zanoni got through those handstand push-ups in less than 40 seconds. So he by far has had the fastest pace on that movement we have seen. And Crouch trying to get through these. You know, when you get in that inverted position, if you tip the scales a little bit out to the side, you, know, you got to make sure you keep that stable position. Sometimes when we get fatigued, especially in a regular handstand, we tend to arch at the back, throw that head back a little bit. That's that's the old school way of doing handstand push up. No option here for that, really. <laughs> You're limited for sure. Jake Crouch is now done, and he'll join Zanoni on the bike. The 90 rep mark is when Zanoni will move back to the wall for the final time. So he's halfway through his 20 calorie ride. He's keep yellow, so he's moving to third. Jake Krause had his best event finish in event number four. That was Elizabeth Elevator, he took 14. About to hit that wall for the final time. This second to last bike here, all I'm thinking about is, hey, manage the fatigue. Get yourself geared up for these last set of handstand push-ups. Zanoni is now done, and he has just 10 handstand push-ups remaining. And so far, he's been able to go unbroken on the prior two sets. Looks good in these first couple. Seconds is the time to beat Zanoni. Looks like he's going to smash that. Zanoni's handstand push up times 35 seconds, 39 seconds, 42 seconds. I mean, just think about that time in learning about without doing handstand push ups. That's a feat in of itself. Akimai Heros and Jay Crouch are fighting for second place in this heat. They're towards the bottom of your screen. Mahero's really arching to get himself. That's pushing that rep. Having to go way deeper, too. But the more he arches, like Chase mentioned before, the further down he's got to go to make that standard. If you want to think of how that feels, if you guys are watching at home, just think of the strength press with the bottom. If you arch your back and lean back to press that up, it's a much more difficult press to do. It's just so strong over the head. Final calories for Enrico Zanoni. And Enrico Zanoni is having a day here. On Friday at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. 707.08 seconds. And now, Mario taking over second place. Five seconds left. Aguila Harris is now on the bike. He is ahead of Jay Crouch, who's still on the wall there in lane. Five, Heinrich Hapalainen is in lane four. He's on his final set. And Tim Paulson is down in lane one. Andre Uday's time is going to be good enough for second place right now with two heats remaining. The next best time is 7.55.89 seconds for Cole Mertens, and Mayeros is getting close to that. I don't know about you, Chase, but that's usually where I'm at when I'm feeling it on the Echo Bike. Head down, I'm not looking at the monitor. I know I'm not there yet. Just keep grinding. The judge will tell me. Exactly. Yes. You might hear us getting sliding to fourth place down the event. Second place in the heat. 810.56 seconds. Or get that back to lady.
Jay Crouch, Heinrich Kapolainen, and Tim Paulson fighting for the lead. All three of them have three reps remaining on their handstand push-ups. Kapolainen is on the left, and Jay Crouch is on the right. He has just one left remaining. One left, I should say. Does Jay Crouch? Tim Paulson on the left. Talked to him uh, before we came out. He said he was feeling good and looking forward to executing here. And Paulson has a minute left to go before we hit the time gap. Meanwhile, Brent Fakowski is still on his final 20 calories on the bike. Brent Fakowski, who's been slowly climbing up the leaderboard, is Tim Paulson. Oh, is oh, laughing. Yes! Send it to him! Oh, the arms are going to fall off. Missing is some chrome spray paint on his grill. My goodness. That was unbelievable. I'd like to get that split, actually. <laughs> what was that 30 cows in? Let's take a look. Tim. Oh, I saw all I saw was Will Farrell and other guys just screaming America and putting the pedal down to the ground <laughs> oh, in the press. But Enrico Zanoni at 707.08 seconds is your heat winner. And he did it with unbroken sets on the wall. For those handstand push-ups, he had to look. Almost like he had to look back. It's like we're good, right? Nobody else. What a day for Enrico Zanoni. Two heat wins. Once again, four men are able to finish inside the 10-minute time cap. Tim Paul's a 946.46 seconds. They might want to replace that echo bike out there because Tim Paulson may have just tested the structural integrity of that thing. Heinrich Hapalainen finishes in 948.98 seconds. Heat three coming up next. Halfway through event number seven for the men, the final event that they will face here on Friday at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Glad you're with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, and five-time individual CrossFit Games competitor and 2011 Open champion Dan Bailey joining us in the booth. Event seven has been exciting so far. It is the Echo Press presented by Monster Hydro. Echo Press is we like to call the press, 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 because that is the crux of this event. New movement as far as standard and body position as they have to face the wall. We've gotten so good at handstand walks, holds, handstand push-ups with deficits on parallettes. It's time to go back to basics for body position and strict shoulder strength. Heat number three of four. Ten men on the floor for this. Uldis Upniks out of Latvia in lane number six. 
former gymnastics background. In fact, we were talking earlier about things he worked on, and parallel bar traverses was one of those challenges that they had when he was a, a, a younger gentleman. And when you think about the traverses in Wednesday night, and the handstand walks interfering with those two moves between the dips and the handstand push-ups. Stand by. E3 underway, 707.08 seven, oh, seven seconds. And when we last talked to you, we were trying to figure out what Tim Paulson's time on the Echo Bike was. 29.9 seconds for those last three challenges. Sparks were flying. <laughs> Tim Paulson testing the structural integrity of the Echo Bike. I thought he was going to rip a hole in the space-time continuum. Well, they have safety factors for everything, and usually it's in the engineering. And now we've decided that the safety factor of how many Tim Paulsons can this sustain as far as stress tests on the Echo Bike. Thank you for your efforts, Tim Paulson. 30 calories to start here, then those 10 wall-facing handstand push-ups. There is oldest Oop Meeks. You know, one of the things I'm looking at, Chase, when these guys get off the echo bike is when they go over to the wall, how long do they take before they do their first wall walk into it? And I always kind of ask the question, if you came over to the wall and you stood and you took like 10 breaths, why did you bike so hard? <laughs> Ooh, the suit if you take a look at Nick Matthew, it makes is the next lane over. He has an event win in the running portion of event number two. But he was ninth and up and over. And one thing I'm thinking about with Nick Matthew is that he won the skills event for the gymnastics on day number one. Yeah, is this something that he's played around with as well? well Jason Hopper was the first man off the plate. We talked about body position as far as going back to basics, midline stability, keeping that spine intact, not hyperextending at the midline as you press through. This isn't a basic movement, it's far from it, but to be successful at it, going back to the basics of body positions, hollow bodies, stacked midline, stacked vertebrae to maximize your strength is the secret to this movement. That's some of the wrinkles that I love that have been thrown into the programming so far. Will Morad to the bike first for his 20 calories. Jason Hopper was right behind him. Travis Mayer got their third, and then Yona Kosi between Mayer and Morad. Morad's best finish coming in the third event. Finished sixth in the Speed Skills medley. Just the, the story of Morad just getting here with the greatest comeback in a final event to get to the games by one point. So no strangers to some high pressure situations. Now, he's been competing for a long time. I competed against Will in 2014, as far back as 2014. So he's been in the game for a very long time. He's definitely a veteran in the sport. Following the 2021 games, he found out that his wife passed at breast cancer. And she's currently doing well and recently announced that she was cancer free was back in March. So Will Moran has had a stressful last year. So Jason Hopper. Back about, to the wall for the second time. You touch on strength and weaknesses. Boz was telling us this in the meeting briefing to this, is that if this isn't the best movement for you, you can at least put some effort in on the bike. But on the flip side, you could be great at this and maybe not so much. Hopper just getting a no rep. Again, press to that head, needs to go below the tape line. And this is something that rewards the best of both, which is everything that you can, the methodology lays out to begin with. We're very greedy Democratic <laughs> athletes. Would you like to be strong or fast? Is like, I want it all. Yes, both, please. That middle lever between the vanilla and chocolate. I'll have the swirl fitness, please. Well, Will Morag is off the wall behind Jason Hopper. Morag has had the fastest splits on the handstand push-ups in this heat. Less than 30 seconds on his first set of 10. About 34 seconds on his second set. And that's where he is keeping even with Jason Hopper. I'm very impressed with Jason Hopper right now. As a bigger gentleman, I wouldn't have picked him to be in the front of the pack or in the lead of the pack with some of these other guys. What is benefiting him is the speed he has on the machines to get himself at least ahead of Morad, who's having the faster pace on the handstand push-ups. He's even been no repped a couple times on the handstand push-ups, and he's still staying on the wall and getting them done. Great result for Hopper in event number two. He finished inside the top eight. 
And then event five, the Capitol, he finished fifth, but following up with a 30th in the last event. Hopper looking over to see the judge's hand for Will Morad, trying to guess maybe how much time he can afford either slow down a little bit on the bike or maybe take one break on the handstand push-ups. Hopper to his final set of 10 handstand push-ups and then 30 calories on the bike. We passed the five minute mark, 707.08 seconds from Enrico Zanoni and he too is your time to beat. And Morad is done on the bike and he is getting onto the wall. Hopper has five to go. And Will Morad is moving well on his third and final set of 10. Morad, he's got to get off the wall before Hopper. There is. Other than maybe what we saw from Tim Paulson, not many better on the bike than Jason Hopper. See, Hopper brought his stance in on his hands to help that over that position. Morad is through and the bike. Hopper is done. Oh, he's got one more. He has one more going to me. Will Morad. Hopper's going to have to take a chance if he wants to catch Morad. Hopper's got a couple more. Will Morad inching closer to that 130 rep mark. Now Morad has company on the bike as Jason Hopper gets to work. That would be very impressed if Hopper caught him. Morad is almost done. His score is behind. His judge's hand is in the air. Morad is done. Morad is in. And Morad is our new leader. about the best time in testing with Street Hoover, who did it at 7.30. And Boss thought that was a pretty solid time that we might not see go down. Well, Morad just blasted it by a minute. Hopper is in. Super impressed with his ability to do these handstand push-ups. Yes. That was amazing. Right now, second place in the event as he edges out Zanoni by 10 seconds. Here's Spencer Panchik. Then once everything ends, the rush of pain that surges into the legs is excruciating. Nick Matthew and Lucas Utkins are onto the bike as Alexander Perot 
He's on the play for the final time. That's in 30 seconds to go. Correa is off. He will finish. 20 seconds. He's going to get across the finish line, but he does complete all the reps. And there is the Nick Matthew cheering section. All rocking the crop top. Most of them rocking the crop top. But Will Morad. And we this on the handstand push-up. This is the second kind of tale of two athlete battle we've seen in the last two heats. And for Will Morad, his benefit was his ability to do the handstand push-ups. But the guy has a lot of power packed into that body. And he was able to hold off Jason Hopper at the end. And Will Morad sets the time to beat 6 minutes 30.15 seconds. Jason Hopper will take second in the heat right now, second best time in the event. Spencer Panchik at 738.91 seconds, followed by Cole Sager, Yonikoski, Alexander Corona, the Nick Matthews sneaking in with just a couple of seconds to spare. Final heat for the men. Coming up next here, the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Glad you're with us, everybody. That's where we started this morning in that great capital event. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, five-time individual CrossFit Games competitor. Dan Bailey joins us in the booth, and Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Overall standings. After six events, it's Ricky Garrard, who is still in first place. He has an 87-point lead over Justin Medeiros. Roman Krennikov now sits in third. Jeff Adler and Sam Quatt rounding out the top five. Echo Press is event number seven, and it has been a lot of fun so far. What's been great is we put so much emphasis on the difficulty of the handstand pushes potentially, but the caliber of athletes as we go from heat to heat is starting to make it an Echo Bike event. And we're looking for the, where can you succeed? We've mastered the handstand push-up as we traditionally know it in the sport of CrossFit. Going back to basics and going into body positions, strict press, maximizing your strength potential with those body positions. That is all needed for these handstand push-ups. Ten men in this fourth and final heat. They're all trying to chase down Will Morad's time of six minutes, 30.15 seconds. Ricky Garrard has worn the leader's jersey from the get-go. And he looks to hang on to it here. Ricky Gerard in the Coliseum Friday night. What a day for Ricky. What a couple of days for Ricky Gerard. Takes the capital event and then hangs in the top for the previous one that we've had today. Top to bottom, Ricky Gerard has had himself a heck of a day. Two down to Mike Arsenault on the competition floor. Making a move toward the podium with the 6th and 13th place finish so far today. Unfortunately, that also included a 38th on elevated Elizabeth. That was very taxing on shoulders and triceps, uh, similar to what will be impacted uh, here in event number 7 with the handstand push-ups. However, that was the first time he was ever on parallel bars. So it was a technique issue, not a strength issue. He regularly does while facing handstand push-ups in his everyday programming. So for today, he will have a much better chance here in event number seven. There is Justin Medeiros who sits in second place. <laughs> Jeff Adler is currently in fourth. So Medeiros is now in a position that we saw Pat Velder last year. He's got to start yeah. finding a way to beat Ricky Garrard and get some help in the process to cut into that 87-point lead. And here we go. 30 calories to start on the Echo Bike. Take you to the year 2005, Sean, when a little affiliate opened in San Francisco with some box containers in a back parking lot called San Francisco CrossFit. Four main coaches there. Kelly Starrett, Carl Paoli, Diane Fu, and one Mr. Adrian Bosman. 
When you think of some of the greats that have come from that affiliate to now, one of the basics of gymnastics training, you go to the journal and just look up handstand push-up progression, you will not see one single handstand push-up as we traditionally know with our back to the wall. They said you have to earn that position by doing push-ups in a hollow body, walking halfway up the wall with a hollow body, facing the wall vertically with a hollow body, and then doing a handstand push-up from that facing position. It's not that this necessarily was the RX Plus version of a handstand push-up, but you had to earn your right to put your back to the wall. That's where we are nearly 15, 18 years later. And if you're not using the very things that you're talking about, it may not cost you a lot on the first set of 10. It may start to wear on you in the second set of 10. But by, by the third, if you're not doing all those cues that you just mentioned, you're going to be taking a lot of breaks in between reps. Roman Krennikov, the first man to his initial set of 10 handstand push-ups. Ricky Garrard's judge's hand is in the air. Here comes Jeff Adler and Lazar Jukic to join Krennikov on the wall. Sam Watt as well. Noah Wilson and Justin Medeiros. And now Ricky Garrard is on the wall. A whole host of men getting it all at the same time here. Krennikov with one more to go. He's done. Back to the back of the Krennikov trying to overtake Justin Medeiros. Roman, the only the second place overall. I tell you what, Sean, I am so impressed by the way Roman Renikov has built himself over the last four years. Traditionally known as a work capacity athlete, a grinder, somebody who loves the pain cave and the machines. Decent at gymnastics. His weakness, weightlifting. And what he did was he put 20 pounds on his body to, able to, to be able to handle a barbell. Usually that comes at a cost of things like work capacity, conditioning, and gymnastics. It hasn't come at a cost for Roman Krennikov, which I think is incredible. He's a guy I competed against in 2019 at the Filthy 150 event, and I saw him succeed at some of the very events you're talking about, work capacity things. When the barbell rolled out, I thought, okay, this guy's going to fall to the bottom of the leaderboard, and he did it. He was a max snatch. He was right there with the other best competitors, and I'm like, man, this guy can never get to the games. He's going to do a lot of damage. Roman Krennikov is your leader, and he is now playing out his set of 20 calories back to the wall. Noah Olsen and Justin Medeiros were the next two men to the play. Ricky Garrard was towards the back here. Up the wall. Krennikov to his second set of 10. Dan, we're talking about what you do in the line. Look at Ricky on the left side. It almost looks, he's resting a bit more in his eyes, but earlier, it looked like he was actually already heavy on the upper body, and not using the legs that you think you should if you're going to go back upside down. Yeah, I mean, it could be just part of the strategy. You really see he's losing now, but if you know that you're going to come off that bike and it's going to cost you on that first rep, there's no sense in pushing yourself there. If you can get these handstand push-ups unbroken, it's going to be the best result for you in this event. Noah Olsen is in second place as Saxon Pantic is moving to third jump. And Jason Medeiros ties with fourth as Roman Krennikov is back to the bike and Ricky Garrard is still pedaling on his first set of 20. Pat Felder on the left side of your screen. Getting to his set of 10 handstand pushes for the second time. Ronan Krennikov is all by himself in front. Time to beat is Will Morad's 630.15 seconds. Saxon Pantic is creeping up on Noah Olsen. Roman Krennikov has got to hit the 90 rep mark. He's got five calories to go before it's back to the wall one final time. And here comes Saxon Panchik. Take a look at what Roman Krennikov has done so far here. Worst finish was in the last event when he took 15. And Krennikov is done. Ricky Garrard is falling back here. Ricky Garrard is taking his second break. You can see him in the very back on his second set of handstand push-ups. What a call for the play. He has six remaining power. Elder is done with his second set of ten. He's on to the play. Ricky just failed a rep. And failed it deep in that handstand push-up. You can see when he starts pushing out of the bottom, he has no speed and his arms are literally shaking. Roll it down. Five, four, four.
He's having trouble getting up onto the wall even. And you see that midline, that real big hyperextension for Ricky. Oh, no, 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 did not get to death there. When you arch your back and you go immediately into that lean back position, the amount of power you can recruit from your body is really coming. Saxon points to Jets and Medeiros down to the wall at the same time. So Medeiros gave it 87 points back. A Roman Predacon looking to shade a significant amount off of that deficit. As Jerome is now down and he'll get to the plate. He and Sam Clark, two of the last three men on the wall. Lazar Jukic is still on his second set of 10. The Predacon has one minute to go and he's to the plate. Start your clock. <laughs> Looks like Will Morad is going to win the event, but Roman Krennikov <laughs> is looking to really put a stranglehold on one of the top three spots in the overall standings. Jason Hopper has the next best time at 657.82 seconds. If Krennikov gets in inside that, he's going to earn 97 points. Here comes Justin McGarris. is kicking it into another gear as Medeiros is starting to put the pressure on him. Krennikov is done and he is in second place for Roman Krennikov. Justin Medeiros now. Correct that. Krennikov is going to finish third. 702.22 so Medeiros. Now looking at a fifth place finish. So Medeiros is in. Fifth place in the event, that'll give him 88 points. And Ricky Guerrero is still on his final set of 10 handstand push-ups. He is really just staring straight down at the floor every time he goes to bottom those out where he wants his head is tucked back looking at the wall behind him. And he look at those positionings, it's just, Max fatigue. He's reaching for anything that he can to try to get the next rep. The Saxon Patrick is on the plate. He's on the far right side of your screen. And Pat Felder is across. The Felder on the way to the first event. Saxon Patrick is across. He'll take 11th. You have about 90 seconds. Ricky Garrard came in with an 87 point lead, and that is going to get much smaller heading into the weekend. This is a super frustrating place to be as an athlete because at some point there's just nothing else you can do. You weren't completely prepared for this movement, you're not going to gain a whole lot of. Technical skill in it in the event. You just have to get on there, send it, do your best. Another fail for Ricky Gerard. Let's see what to go. Rubinson is done. That's going to be 16th in the event for Gordon Carl Rubinson. Olsen. Is in. As is Jeff Adler, leaving Sam Quant, Ricky Gouard, and Lazar Jukic still on the floor. Sam Quant. Cranking away and trying to get it inside that 10 minute time cap. his hand in the air for Clark. Three seconds to go. Clark looks like he did it. Sam Clark did not get across the finish line. Oh, he did. By two one hundredths of a second. I love it. He makes it. Now, Ricky Garrard unofficially is going to finish 28th. 
which now, means that Justin Medeiros shaved 62 points off that deficit. That's why we keep playing the game, ladies and gentlemen. Now we are about to see what Ricky Garrard is really made of. He's had a nice, great weekend up to this point. Just took one on the head. We got two more days to find out what that is. Ricky Garrard not nearly as happy as Roman Krennikov was. Krennikov in his first in-person appearance at the CrossFit Games, and he is having a heck of a weekend so far. Roman Krennikov, he's one of the best on the machines, and he proved that, but Ricky Garrard showed where the weakness was, and this is what we said is body position, going back to the basics. It's not that you should have known it's inverted, but knowing what a good body position should feel like under fatigue. Good technique will always trump absolute strength when it comes down to fatigue elements out here on the field. Especially with all these other competitors who are so amazing. Ricky Garrard with his worst event finish so far. He does look like he's gonna hang on to the overall lead, but Justin Madera's just gotten a lot closer. Will Morad is going to wind up winning the event. Six minutes, 30.15 seconds. Jason Hopper with his best finish of the competition takes second place. And it's Roman Krennikov in third. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault, who's with Will Morad. Will, you made your first appearance at the CrossFit Games back in 2014. It took you until 2022 to get your first event win, and you did it on Friday night in the Coliseum. What was that experience like? Yeah, it's amazing. Competing in front of this amazing group of fans is always a privilege. Thank you guys. Um, and really it was just trusting my abilities on that workout and uh, just doing what I do every day in training. So pretty happy about that. You're a veteran in this sport and you've seen a lot of iterations of handstand push-ups. Where does this one rank? I think it's my favorite, right? I won the event. <laughs> so yeah. And what does it mean to you to still be able to qualify and compete on this floor in front of all these fans this far along, almost a decade into your CrossFit Games career? Man, it never gets old. Like I said, these people are amazing. Um, the communities that we work out with every day are amazing. So it means the world. Congratulations, 100 points here in event number seven. Thank you. Ricky Garrard is still your leader, but now Justin Medeiros only 25 points back. Roman Krennikov stays in third, and he's only 21 back of Justin Medeiros. And Jeff Adler and Pat Vellner rounding out the top five. Saxon Panchik moves into sixth, and Sam Blunt in seventh. We will catch our breath and set up for the women's version of Echo Press. Don't go away, everybody. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram and the Sticky Brazier down on the competition floor. Event number seven, if you watch the men, it's a blast. Man, I think the floor is still on fire after what we just saw in that last heat. But here we go for the women. Echo Bike Cows dropping every number by five for the bike, changing nothing for the handstand push-ups. Looking at the wall, you got to get inverted, you got to face the wall. Back to the basics for body positions and maximizing the power with good positioning. And you either got it or you don't. We've seen this play out on the men's side. And we've seen a lot of people get stopped in their tracks on these blocks. That's your recipe for success presented by Trifecta. Let's go down to the competition floor with Nikki Brazier. A couple different standards here for the ladies from the men that you just saw. First, the time cap has increased. It's 12 minutes instead of 10. And the second difference is the standard on the handstand push-ups. Fisa Gothi from the demo team is going to demonstrate for us so what we can see. It has to do with the line down here that shows when the rep is complete. Now the ladies will do their deficit handstand push-ups just so that their head passes into the plane of this white line. The men, when you watched them previously, had to pass all the way through the line. Thank you, Fee. Think of it like a wall ball. Oftentimes that line is thick on the wall. The men have to go all the way above it and the women just have to enter it. That's the main difference. Nine women in this first of four heats. See how they handle this new movement. A lot of rookies here in heat number one: Sola Sigurdotter, Elena Caratala, Salahuya, Christine Kohlenbrander, Freya Moosberger, and Julia Cato.
That is Elena Karatala Sanahuya. He's had a decent in run so far. 35th place overall, but has had, like you said, some solid yeah, performances. She's, she's had some moments. This definitely being another unique test for these athletes. One thing we saw Wednesday night with Elizabeth elevated, the traversing across the parallel bars, di disrupting the lockout for the dip. And we'll see the same thing here for the wall as they'll have to wall walk their way into position, step up onto the block. That's going to be another task for these athletes to take on before they can even get into their handstand push-ups. Ladies and 25 calories to start here for the women on the echo bike. Depending on an athlete's skill set or even ability to do these, even this opening 25 cows is that we've seen that it's not necessarily one on the bike here. If you have competency in both, you could use that to your advantage, but the first set of 25 is just to buy you. You want to stay relaxed on your arms, make sure you're breathing freely. You know, you don't want to trigger any type of response as far as like muscular fatigue too soon because, listen, it's been a heck of a day. We had the capital run. We've had the previous event with the muscle ups, the jump overs, the 90 GSD sit ups, and a challenging front rack lunge. These athletes have been through a lot, and that's just today. That's not to mention the four other events that they had previous to this. So managing that fatigue in the beginning and not tipping the scales too much in the red on the first bike is imperative because getting inverted is going to be the biggest challenge for these athletes. Rola Sigurd daughter is your leader right now. Oh, yeah. 20 of those initial 25 calories. Fred Hoosberg is right on the heels of the last Michelle Barrett. Right now, on pace to get off of that echo by first, but it is too close to call. We have a handful of judges with their hands in the air. Freya looking to get off first, and she does, ladies and Freya Moosbrugger will be first. Off of the Echo Bike, followed closely by Sung Young Choi and Sola Sugar Daughter. The 10 reps, and as you heard Nikki at the beginning, their head needs to break the plane of that white. And it's not to the white, it's through the white. And the top part of that white line, the men had to pass the low. alone. Caroline Spencer. Looking to go unbroken, possibly, on her. She has one remaining, and Caroline Spencer's going to get all 10 done and take the lead and head back to the Echo Bike now for 15 calories. Good. Putting yourself in good body positions, not making the movement harder than it needs to be. That awareness of your body in space is the definition of gymnastics that we use at the level one certification. She is an athlete, as Caroline Spencer, who excels in high rep gymnastics. She's a former competitive cheerleader, competed at the CrossFit Games last year, and took 33rd, and her husband is also competing in the men's division. When you think about gymnastics, especially on the women's side, it's always that ability to stack their body inverted. Floor routine, hand springs, handstand walks, handstand holds is a huge part of that training. And to be able to put yourself in a good midline body position, it helps maximize the strength potential in these athletes as opposed to breaking at the midline and losing that power. Caroline Spencer at the 50 rep mark will move on to the wall for the second time. So Young Choi's judge's hand is in the air. Christine Kohlenbrander is the other athlete on the Echo Bike right now. Kohlenbrander making her first individual appearance at the CrossFit Games. She's a two-time team competitor with CrossFit 417 in 2017 and again in 2018 as both Sung Young Choi and Caroline Spencer head to the wall. So the super daughter is moving to the bike. 
Nice tight midline for Choi. Look at her, especially at the top of that rep. Nice and vertical and stacked. A little shallow on that last rep where she got a no rep. Again, you got to make sure that head passes into the white line. The challenge for the judges is the hair blocking that white line. Now, Sigurd Daughter got a no rep for that. You can see she's definitely short of the white line. So definitely something judges have been briefed on and looking for as far as the range of motion standards for this event. Caroline Spencer, as you saw, Sigurd Daughter works on her 15 calories. Spencer has moved on to the bike for another 15 calories. She's on the bottom left-hand part of your screen. Spencer got ahead on the handstand push-ups after the first round. Choi caught her on the bike going into the second set of handstand push-ups. And you just look at the bike. One of the troubles that smaller athletes have is those handlebars are almost at her face. And that is not a very powerful position if you think the ability of the arms to help the legs. Choi being a, a little bit taller has the ability to put a bit more power into the bike, which allows her to catch up. Here right, comes Sonia Choi joining Caroline Spencer on the bike for those 15 calories. After this, it's another 10 handstand push-ups and then those final 25 calories to close things out. 110 total scored repetitions here. Spencer has five calories to go. Spencer, final set of 10 deficit handstand push-ups. Sonia Choi's the judge's hand is in the air. Spencer now with Five remaining, and Sung Young Choi gets set for her final set of ten. I think about, a lot about stabilizing the midline that we spoke of is that, you know, what should that feel like in a gymnastics movement, especially upside down? No different than, say, a max lift. Bracing for a back squat with the midline, both anterior and posterior, just meaning the abs and those back erectors. It's the same brace. It's the same retraction of all those muscle groups to stabilize the spine. It's no different than a gymnastics movement as it does in a weightlifting one. Spencer with two reps remaining here. 12 minute time cap for the women. That'll get it done for Caroline Spencer. 25 calories remaining on the echo bike. And Sung Young Choi still has three reps remaining. And the way she's handled these handstand push-ups from start to finish, that she has an, has an opportunity to have a decent score, even from heat number one. So she's got to be sure, as even though she's well ahead of everybody in this heat, three more heats to go. So you just got to sell it here. If there's nothing left. It's the last event of the night. You could give yourself an opportunity to pick up some decent points. Sonia Choi is starting to struggle now with those handstand push-ups with Caroline Spencer. Needs to get to 110 on her rep count. Final five for Caroline Spencer. Christine Kohlenbrander is onto the wall for the final time. She's another level 10 gymnast who's competing in this heat. And Spencer is done, and she is in. 836.64 seconds for Caroline Spencer. So Young Choi is on the bike. Sola Sigurdotter is also on the wall. She's in the background there. 
Now just getting set to get back up in the position to work on her handstand push-ups. Christine Kohlenbrander and Sung Young Choi also working on their final sets. Oh, pardon me, Julia Kato is working on her final set. Sung Young Choi is on the fight for the final set. Christine Cole Brand as we approach the 10 minute mark, getting back to work on her final set of handstand push-ups. Daughter showed a few reps to go before she'll get back to the fight. This is that compounding effect we're talking about, about the wall walks taking its toll. Usually, with handstand push-ups, with your back to the wall, quick singles is a go-to when we can no longer string together reps. It's not an advantage with this particular move because you have to do the entire walk up the wall and step up to do a movement you're already failing to begin with. It is a tough thing to get reduced to singles on this particular movement. Less than a minute to go before we hit the time cap. And a no rep for Christine Cole and Bradley. Sola Superdaughter right now is your leader on the floor. She just has to complete one more rep to get to the fight. She will do it. 15 seconds to go, Superdown is just going to try to amass as many calories as she can now. Heat number one is done. Caroline Spencer, 836.64 seconds, takes the heat. is going to matter in the later heats for sure. We talked about going back to good body positions and Spencer leaning into that old gymnastics background of hers and it paid off. Bikes weren't the best thing for her, but the, the way she handled those handstand push-ups definitely offset that as far as the bike is concerned. And doing multiple sets unbroken or one break alone, that's a great time for Caroline Spencer. Only Spencer and Sung Young Choi are able to complete that event in its entirety before the 12 minute time cap. Choi comes in at 931.93 seconds. Three heats remain, heat number two coming up next.
three heats remain here for the women in Echo Press, the seventh event of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. 25 cows on the bike to start things off, and then it gets real when we get to the wall. 10 reps at each set, three total sets of 10. And we've seen the brakes get slammed on some athletes, and we've seen some athletes succeed because of simple things like body position and maximizing your strength potential in those positions. Easier said than done. This is something that a lot of athletes have done over the years, maybe done for the first time as far as getting in those good positions. And sometimes you got it, sometimes you don't. Recipe for success presented by Trifecta. Your heat to startless. Ten women on the floor here. Elisa Fuliano will be uh, in lane number eight. Eight months ago, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, realized that her window for making the Cross the Games was going to be not open for very long. She poured all she had into it this year, and here she is, 26 overall after six events. A lot of driving forces for athletes is you centered around a why. And usually that why needs to be something a bit more personal and concrete. It's not about, I want to make the games. It's not about, I want to lose weight. Those are great goals, but why do you want to do that such thing? And to have that driving force of a why is the reason how she got herself in the first place. And that's a very powerful thing to utilize when you get into events like this. Top time from heat number one belongs to Caroline Spencer, 836.64 seconds. We start with 25 calories on the Echo Bike. Bailey Rail, who had a great finish in the previous event, one of a handful of athletes to go end to end on that front rack walking lunge towards the finish. Finished eighth and up and over earlier in the day, courtesy of that effort on that 125 pound axle bar, lunging at 84 feet unbroken. And that moved her up to 21st overall. This is a curious test for Danny Spiegel. She's got great power output, one of the stronger athletes in the field, and is fantastic inverted on her hands when you talk about handstand walking. Well, how can that all translate to this inverted forward-facing handstand push-up? I'm curious to see how her strengths can be utilized for a new movement such as this. Judge's hand in the air for Danny Spiegel. She has just a calorie left here, but she will move to the wall for her first 10 handstand push-ups. Spiegel off the break first. Okay, so being that good handstand walker that she is, this wall walk should be no problem. But here's where the challenging part, that step up. Look at that vertical position. Now, foot almost came off the wall, and there comes a balance component of this movement. And sometimes it just takes finding a rhythm and a feel for the movement. And once you dial that in, and you can start replicating that, that's where you start to succeed in this movement. Danny Spiegel, first to the wall, but now she has some company. Ellie Turney, Ellie Turner, Victoria Campos, Karn Freyova, Paige Powers, and Alice Gazan. Now the entire field here in heat number two on their first set of 10 hands. And Bush Spiegel is through eight of the 10. Alice Gazan is going to be done first. Bottom of your screen, she moves back to the bike. We're now 15 calories. And the one thing for Alex Kazan is that she has one of the heaviest, if not heaviest, bench press in the women's field. Now, I alluded to good body positions. Sometimes, leaning on brute strength can also be a positive. And for Alex Kazan, I'm looking forward to what her body position looks on this next set of handstand push-ups because does arching at your back, is that the best position? No. But for her strength, having a 248-pound bench press, as she did in the quarter finals, recruiting the chest and front part of the shoulders in any possible form that you can, as well as the triceps, maybe is worth her, her personal benefit to utilize one of her best strengths, which is that brute pressing strength. 
Danny Spiegel's judge's hand is in the air. She has three calories to go. And Alex Kazan's judge's hand is in the air as well. Kazan is a member of that crew out of Las Vegas. The other guy's crew, headed by Justin Potter, as Danny Spiegel makes her way to the wall. I say her fire going through her set of 15 calories as Alex Kazan will join Danny Spiegel and now Victoria Campos to the wall right next to Alex Kazan. Kazan, a former high school lacrosse player in Oregon, and told me that she didn't like the fact that she didn't get to play full contact. <laughs> Not someone I want to tassel with in maybe a dark alley if that's your attitude about contact sports, but Kazan on the right side of the screen on the left. Did three reps to start, now she, she looks very good. Nice, strong, smooth tempo, but she's breaking on purpose. And we've seen a lot of athletes almost scared away from breaks because of the handstand one element of making the handstand push up harder. But for her, since she has such good strength in her upper body pressing, Deliberate breaks might be the best thing for her to not go into that red line position that we've seen some athletes get to. Andy Spiegel and Alex Kazan continue to lead their number two. The time to beat belongs to Caroline Spencer, 8.46.6 seconds. Spiegel's done, Kazan has done two sets of three, followed by a set of two of deliberate breaks. And it's all going to set her up. Going into this final 10 handstand push-up, anything can happen. Like I said, you tip that toe into the point of no return at all for this movement. Not only can you lose some time, but you might not be able to get another rep. So it's going to come down to this race between Spiegel and Gazan. Gazan on the bottom of your screen, second woman to the bike for the final set of 15 calories. And Paige Powers up at the top of your screen now in third place. Spiegel the top, lane number three. Start on the bike pretty quick, and she's just trying to get the fan going so you don't have that slow start. But what's unique to the Echo bike, different than other air bikes, is that it doesn't reward you on a curve based off the intensity or the speed that you go. It's pretty linear. You can go faster by going faster, but you don't really get bonus counts by going fast. So getting the fan going really quick and then settling into a pace, it's a much more consistent calorie counter than other air bikes. Danny Spiegel with one calorie to go, and she is done now with final set of 10. Handstand push-ups, Alice Kazan's in the judges' hands in the year. Paige Powers is overtaking Kazan on the bike. Spiegel has been breaking really off by feel on the handstand push-ups, not really a consistent rep scheme. Kazan on the last one did two sets of three, two sets of two, but looked very strong while doing it. So the question is, is she gonna maybe take a chance here to take one less break off the table and give her an opportunity to match up with Danny Spiegel on the bike? Paige Powers on the left has moved ahead of Alice Kazan for second place. Danny Spiegel has to get six more reps here on the handstand push-ups before she can go back to the bike for her final 25 calories. As Danny's taking a break, Paige Powers is staying on the walls, moving ahead of Spiegel. Powers out with five to go. Powers got to be careful. Make sure you get to that line clearly, because you don't want to waste a rep here. Spiegel just got a no rep on the right. Powers with three to go ahead of Spiegel, who has four left. Kazan has five of them. So in the year for Kazan, so like I said, if, if that's five, that means she took a chance. That's not two sets to three, how you get there. Depending on how she feels, this might be an opportunity for get all set and get to the bike. And here we go, Powers, Powers on the far left side of your screen. Short set for Kazan on the right. Paige Powers, I think, has one more rep remaining here. As does Danny Spiegel. Alex Kazan is through seven of the ten. The total Compost is now through two. Spiegel gets to the fight. Right in front of Paige Powers. Eight, 36.64 seconds of Caroline Spencer is your top time. 25 calories here need to be completed before you can cross the finish line. And it's Spiegel taking on Paige Powers. Safe for now. 
110 reps is what they need to complete here, and Spiegel has 12 to go. Caroline Spencer's time is going to survive. Now it's a question. Can anybody slide it inside the sun? You choice. Second best time of 9.1.9.3 seconds. And Dan Spiegel is definitely going to do that. Spiegel is done again. seconds. Nice, consistent race for Spiegel. Kept a good pace and good tempo and timing across all three sets. We talk a lot about Al O'Brien and the loss of his team in the field, but Paige Powers has been one of those knocking on the door for a couple of years, and she's also one of those two Gazan is on to the plate. And she is across the finish line. Gazan now with the fifth best time at 939.33 seconds. And Victoria Campos trying to close out her event here. Well, bit a time gap for the women. Gazan had a good last five. She went for it on that final set of 10. She tried to deviate from the plan and Look, you got to give respect to any athlete that's trying to go out there and win, not just sit back and just hope it comes to them. Is through 15 of her 25 calories here. Three remaining for Campos. Now one minute remaining. Sayer Kaya is on the bike as well. Twenty seconds remaining, and Rail has ten calories left. In this heat, finished the event inside a 12 minute time cap. Danny Spiegel right now, the second best time that we've seen, 8.57.34 seconds. Danny Spiegel, who's had the start, has the skill set based off her strengths to have a successful attempt at this event. And she showed that even though Paige Powers closed pretty hard at the end, Danny Spiegel did what, exactly what she needed to get done. Giving an opportunity to get ahead of Paige Powers on that final 25 cal echo bike. Danny Spiegel was able to hold off Paige Powers and comes across the finish line and gets rewarded for her efforts. 8.57.34 seconds, the second best time that we have seen is Caroline Spencer's mark of 8.36.64 is still the top time heading into heat number three. Action continues when we return.
halfway through the final event of the day for the women here inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. It's the Echo Press. We've had a few cracks at this so far. As we look at the balance between the bike and the high skill gymnastics. But we're facing the wall this time for these deficit handstand push-ups. Back to the basics, body positions. Putting yourself in a mechanical advantage of utilizing the strength in your shoulders. Not going at the midline, con getting compressed in the shoulders. It's all coming back to good positions as well as your fitness. And sometimes you, can, you got it, sometimes you don't. That's your recipe for success, presented by Trifecta. Ten women in this third of four heats. Jacqueline Dahlstrom out of Norway will be in lane number six. Currently 12th place overall, and she has two top ten finishes so far in this competition. She's one of those athletes that, again, we talk about skill sets and utilizing the, and maximizing your potential as an athlete. She is one of those athletes that has the ability to do well in these inverted handstand push-ups. <laughs> As we've seen so far, it's, it's one thing to predict it, it's another thing to do it in person. Caroline Spencer from heat number one still has your top time. Eight minutes, 36.64 seconds as we start with those 25 Echo Bite calories. Big buy-in at the front, you can see Carl Saunders nice and relaxed, and that's what these 25 cows should look like. You see a lot of athletes get a little amped up. We're in the Coliseum, it's packed to the gills. It's Friday night, this is something all athletes wish to do, but in your 10th year at the CrossFit Games, someone like Carl Saunders knows how to manage the moment. You saw Matilda Garns at the start there, really laying into the the bike and she is already through 15 of those 25 calories. She is by far the leader right now. Matilda Garns on the right side of the black top is definitely pushing the pace here. And for me, it, it, that's either a sign of you don't know what you're doing or you do know what you're doing. And if it's the latter, I can't wait to see what's next for Matilda Garns. Garns is done with those 25 calories and she will be first to the wall for her Opening set of 10 handstand push-ups. Talking to Dan Bailey earlier, and he was saying, he's like, you get off the bike and take a big break. What was the benefit of doing it that fast that I have to see how these first couple of reps look like? Burns is taking her time getting to the wall. Jacqueline Dahls from Carolyn Rebo and Kate Cemento will be the next ones to finish. Burns, one of the rookies here. Really says in 14th place overall. Here comes Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Amanda Barnhart. Barnhart at the bottom of your screen getting right to work. They see Dahlstrom can barely even get down to that bottom position. And the idea is probably just trying to get her enough time to just even get one rep, but Amanda Barnhart, one of the stronger overhead that you'll have in the field. There is Laura Horvath. Look, we know the scattering report on Laura Horvath. It's always been handstand push-ups in any variety other than, say, traditional kipping. The thing is, is like we know it's something she works on. She knows what the challenge is. And this is one of those moments of, okay, where can I unlock more potential to get me better at this movement? This might be one of those things that Boz throws out there for the athletes to think about in the offseason. Another no rep for Horvath. We got presses. You can do accessory work by strengthening your triceps and shoulders. There is other ways to unlock that potential and get better, and this type of position is. I talked to him during the men's heat. If you go to the CrossFit Journal and just type handstand push-up progression, there's two videos. They're both about 15 minutes long. Never at one time did they have an athlete do a handstand push-up with their back facing the wall. They went to the basics. Body position from the push-up off the floor. Keeping that body position with your feet on the wall. Walking your hands to the wall in an inverted position and doing a handstand push-up from there. It's not a matter of that's the easy way to do it, but that's the best way to teach 
proper body position and mechanics to make a traditional handstand push-up, as far as the games are concerned, easier to do. Emma McQuaid is your leader right now. Next to her is Turi Helgadotter. They were the first two women back in the fight for the second time. Laura Horvath continues to receive no reps for not hitting depth on the descent on those handstand push-ups. Now Emma McQuaid is done, and she will move back to the wall for her second set of 10. And one of the things we haven't touched on much is that athletes are not touching their head to the floor. Traditionally with deficit handstand push-ups, it's on some blocks, but the head still makes contact with the ground. And that gives you almost a little bit of a, a fulcrum to launch yourself off of. Now you just have to find depth in a dead stop freestanding position it's a lot more challenging than if they were allowed to touch their head to an object at the bottom. Emma McQuaid moving very well here on the second set of 10. Now on the women's side, he said the, the head just needs to make it to the white line at the top where the men had to pass below. Emma McQuaid onto the bike for another 15 calories. Truby Helgadotter and Lucy Campbell are in second and third. Now Cara Saunders is working her way back to the wall for her second set of 10. Quay's got to get to the 75 rep mark before she can move on. She's the only woman on the bike right now. McQuaid is done. Turi Helgadon are just now getting to the bike for her 15 calories. So Emma McQuaid with 10 handstand push-ups in the final 25 calories to close things out. And there is Sam Briggs, who has trained with Emma McQuaid and earlier was trying to get the crowd behind McQuaid as she was working her way to the bike for the second time. final set of 10. Lucy Campbell sits in third. She is tied with Helgadotter right now. But Helgadotter 
is about a half rep ahead of Lucy Campbell at this point. Other daughter taking a break. 12 minute time cap here as Carl Saunders is down to the wall for the final time. was for Campbell. She almost did an entire handstand push-up just getting up onto the wall. You see that failure creeping in. Elgadar is driving so good to the bike for 25 calories. It's two minutes and 40 seconds to complete that. There's competition director Adrian Bosman. to help out Turi Helgadotter. Carol Crevo has moved to the handstand push ball for the final time. And now Lucy Campbell is onto the bike on the bottom of your screen. Amanda Barnhart, she's closing out her second set of 15 calories. Lucy Campbell at the bottom of your screen. That's that frantic pace you want to see from Natalie trying to close this event. And Lucy Campbell overtakes Turi Helgadotter and comes in, in second place in the heat with a time of 10 minutes 40.04 seconds. Helgadotter coming through the final final and she is in. Carolyn Prevo and Cara Saunders are your next two athletes on the floor. Cara Saunders is on the bike for the final time. Less than a minute to knock out 25 calories, and she's through five. Inside the time cap. And Emma McQuaid, that was a impressive performance. Start to finish. And so tough to do that, isolated on your own. As Sam Briggs might have the coolest coaching shirt I've ever seen. Nacho, average coach. And Emma McQuaid with the crowd behind her sets a new time to beat here Friday night. 801.72 seconds for Emma McQuaid, Lucy Campbell, Turi Helgadotter, and Kara Saunders, the other women to finish that event. Laura Horbath and Matilda Garns both get capped with 84 reps remaining, and they will both finish towards the bottom of this event when it is all said and done. Final heat coming up next.
We started the day at the Capitol. We finish inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. And we are glad you are with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Overall standings coming into event number seven. Tia Toomey by five points over Mal O'Brien as the youngsters are hanging tough here. Emma Lawson, the 17-year-old rookie, sits in third. Haley Adams and Danielle Brandon rounding out the top five. Sean, let me know if you've heard this phrase before. Constantly varied functional movements executed at high intensity. We're looking at that functional movement out there, folks, based on real-world situational biomechanics which place a high demand on the body's core musculature and innervation. That is the test that we have here. What is CrossFit? You're going to find out. Back to the basics, baby. Functional mechanics, that's what we want to see. A press is a press is a press, but we're switching things up. We should see some transferability here. And if you got it or you don't, 10 athletes on the board, we're about to see who has it. Ten women in this fourth and final heat, and overall leader Tia Toomey is back in the familiar leader's jersey, but only clinging to a five-point lead over Mal O'Brien. Tia Toomey starting things off at the Capitol, chipped away at that overall lead, but it was out here at North Park where Tia Toomey was back to doing Tia Toomey things, dominating this event from start to finish. But even with that domination, only three points added to that lead against Mal O'Brien, only leading by five. Stand by. Here we go, 25 calories to start. Now think back to last year, inside the Coliseum, opening night, we had a handstand wall. Mal O'Brien was able to out-duel Kia Toomey for her first career win at the CrossFit Games. With that handstand walk, that is the initial portion of this handstand push-up in that forward-facing position. Mal O'Brien is probably the best female athlete when it comes to wall walks. And so in order to get in that position, that's what she's going to need to lean on to make sure that's not as taxing for her inverted. Mark back to Wednesday night. The parallel bar transfers into the dip, ended up biting Tia at the end of that event. We have a similar pattern here where you have to walk yourself into a position before you can start the rep. What are we going to see? We see that wall walk be advantageous to Mal or detrimental to Tia like we saw on Wednesday night. in the air for Mal O'Brien. She is through 20 calories. She's got about a five calorie lead on Tia Toomey. So Toomey is towards the back here on this initial 25 calorie ride. When Mal O'Brien is done, she will move to the wall first. Now, Alexis Raptus is done at the top of your screen. She and O'Brien getting to work at the same time. Here comes Haley Adams and Gabby McGowan. Top in lane one. Raptus in lane one is just repping those out. And Mal O'Brien, that was a tough first rep. You got to get that forehead into the line. You don't have to pass it just into it. Raptus made a huge splash in quarterfinals. Here comes Toomey as Raptus is already through her first set of 10. Now nobody panic. This is not the first time we've seen Toomey slowest off the first portion of a bike or a row, and that's on purpose. And Tia Toomey. Has yet to break here on this first set of 10. She has two reps remaining, and Toomey got through it unbroken. Toomey and Lawson to the plank at the same time. Alexis Raptus on the bottom left is your leader. Lawson's in the gray top towards the top of your screen. And Mal O'Brien is having trouble here. Tia Toomey very slow off the first bike on purpose. We've seen this before. Raptus is still your leader. She's almost done with her 15 calorie right now. She is done. She's heading to the wall. 
for her second set of 10 handstand push-ups. And Raptus has gotten right to work. Now Mal O'Brien is on the bike. Raptus has six reps remaining on her set of 10. She's on the upper left-hand part of your screen, just got hit with a no rep for not meeting depth. Hand in the air for Tia Toomey. There's Raptus. And you think of an air squat. You don't squat to a med ball when you're showing virtuosity in the movement. You know where depth is and you can bounce out of that bottom position. For Raptus, she needs to feel that bottom position instead of search for the bottom position. That'll help her out a lot. Raptus is on the bike in the upper left-hand part of your screen. Second set of 15. Tia Toomey and Emma Lawson are to the wall for the second time. Toomey went unbroken on her last set. Here comes Mal O'Brien. Toomey looking to go unbroken yet again as Alexis Raptus is just shaking out her arms, not even using them on the echo play. Savvy move, no need. The bike portion at this moment in the event is basically irrelevant if you can handle the pants and push-ups like Raptus has. Toomey back to the bike. Tia's bike pace has increased every time she's gotten to the bike. Slowest off round one, fast round two, and pushed the pace a little bit here in round three. Raptus back to the wall, bottom left-hand part of your screen, final 10 reps on the handstand push-ups for her. Toomey's down through four of those 15 calories. Raptus more confident than she was previously. I say, get to the bottom, not search for it. When you're searching for it, you start to slow down. You don't get enough little stretch reflex at the bottom part of that press. She's moving a lot faster than she did on that second set. Raptus down with a no rep, which I'll just play into the Raptus right back to work. Emma Lassa on the right side of the black pants is to the bike for the second set of 15. And Tia Toomey is set to close out her round of 15 on the bike. And Raptus is done, and Raptus will go back for the final 25 calories here. 801.72 seconds is the time to beat. Tia Toomey to the wall for her final set of 10. It's not a lot of times you get an opportunity to win an event at the CrossFit Games. There's been less opportunities to win an event at the CrossFit Games by being that athlete to the right of your screen. She'll add 97 points to her total if she can get in inside that time. What's good for her is Mal O'Brien is on the bike behind her. She still has 10 handstand push-ups to go, so this is a great opportunity for Tia to extend that lead. Tia Toomey's family on the left, the first time they have all been here to watch her compete in person. Final calories for Tia Toomey. And embracing her family across the finish line. Now we have to see what Emma Lawson is able to do. Lawson is still on her final set of handstand push-ups. 
Emma McQuaid is gonna lock up third place in the event. Next best time, Caroline Spencer, 836.64. That would be good for fourth. No rep for Emma Lawson. She still has two remaining. Mal O'Brien is back to the wall for the final time as well. O'Brien is the four of her final time. Now Lawson onto the plank. That's great for Lawson and the position she wants. And one for her is just. I mean, we thought just getting in the top 10 was great for a rookie. We saw that with Mal O'Brien last year, getting 7th, 8th overall. For Emma Lawson, she's knocking on the door of holding on to a podium position. I mean, if you're not excited about the future of the women's division, I do not know what to tell you at this point. Ariel Lowen is on to the Echo Bike as well. Lowen is now through three of those 25 calories, and she is creeping up on Emma Lawson. She's within three Lowen is closing the gap. Lawson is through 16. Lowen is through 13. And Brooke Wells is on the bike as well. Across the finish line. So she holds off Ariel Lowen. 943.37 is going to be good for ninth in the event. Huge for Lawson, who needs to get closer to Mal O'Brien. There's also a battle between fourth and fifth as Lowen's trying to close out. Lowen's sitting at seventh overall. And now she is in. Haley Lowen, 104.54. Haley Adams is trying to get away from Danielle Brandon. That's a race for the top five. She's only separated by six points. There's Brooke Wells, who has 13, now 12 calories left. She's the only woman on the bike for the final time that Mal O'Brien pops up. And this is great for Mal O'Brien, or for Emma Lawson, is if more athletes can sneak between her and Mal O'Brien as Mal's getting to the bike, as he said. Mal's got to do everything she can to Sat back, Fraser cheering on Mal O'Brien. Mal O'Brien had a 21 point lead on Emma Lawson coming into this event. If you look at the top 10, that's about seven places on the leaderboard. O'Brien and O'Connell are on the screen. O'Brien's at the top, O'Connell's at the bottom, and there's Fraser. O'Connell is through 21 of the 25 dollars. Cheering on Chrissy O'Connell. Now O'Connell is done. So Brian's going to take 15 in the event. Now Brian got past O'Connell. Let's talk about working on weakness. Impressive line. on the wall for the last set of handstand push-ups. Haley Adams not going to be able to make it, but a great effort from her. Alexis Raptus is going to win the event. Her first career event win as an individual at the CrossFit Games. Tia Toomey will finish in second, and she will widen her lead over Mal O'Brien by 39 points unofficially. We've seen in years past, going into Saturday, that number looked like 239 points. So Medeiros, Medeiros has gotten closer to Gerard, dropped that to 25. Tia has extended that lead to 30 plus unofficially. But Alex Raptis. Coming out hot from the beginning. Tia, that slow start on purpose in the front, but for Raptus, what's huge for her is that, listen, she had a great early campaign of qualifying, but it's a big 
stage here at the CrossFit Games and to get a win and solidifying a top 10 place going into the Saturday competition. Huge for Raptus. 641.18 seconds. Beats Toomey by more than a minute. Emma McQuaid's top time will slide down for third place overall. Caroline Spencer, who set that time in heat number one, finishes fourth. As Danny Spiegel taking fifth. Let's go down to Nikki Brazier with Alexis Raptus. Alexis, this was such a unique twist on a basic movement, the press, and you seem to handle it like a pro, like you've done this a million times before. How did you approach it? Um, I love handstand push-ups, so I just went into it knowing that I could handle it however it went. And um, if I got a no rep, just shake it off and come down and then get right back up. We saw a really great combination of power on the bike and gymnastics. How do you balance those two in your training? Um, I mean, the gymnastics side of it is my favorite part. And so the bike, I just tried to relax my arms as much as I could and uh, push it, but not redline it until the last bike. And when you're in the final heat of women and you know you've got the reigning and defending champ right behind you, how motivating is it for you to keep going? Oh, it's so motivating. I mean, also the people here screaming, yeah. Has, yeah. it helps so much. So thank you guys. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alexis Raptor's first career event win as an individual here at the CrossFit Games. Overall standings going into the final two days. Tia Toomey now with a 44-point lead over Mal O'Brien. Emma Lawson is only three points back. That's going to be a great battle to watch over the next two days. And Haley Adams only 45 back. On the men's side, Ricky Garrard at 681, followed by Justin Medeiros. Roman Krennikov sitting there in third place, and Jeffrey Adler needs to get some work done over the next couple of days if he wants to have a chance of getting inside the top three. Fantastic crowd here in Madison, and it's only Friday on what was a memorable day. Tia Toomey, back where we're used to seeing her, but it is much closer. Thanks so much, everybody, for spending the day with us. We really appreciate it. For Chase Ingram, Nikki Brazier, Mike Arsenault, I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks so much. We will see you tomorrow.